I started to have some very powerful experiences, which whetted my appetite for much more. And during this time, the fast-growing grassroots network of New Age classes, organizations, and seminars in the late 70s and early 80s made it easy for me to explore many New Age options. Among others, I attended the famous Silva Mind Control, today called the Silva Method. This is a two-weekend seminar package designed expressly for mainstream America in which more than 7 million people from 60 countries have gone through. In it, I started to delve much more deeply into such practices as acquiring familiar spirits, developing psychic powers, creating your own reality with mind power techniques, occultic healing methods, and many other New Age practices. This organization is so confident that its techniques work that they offer a money-back guarantee if they don't, and few people ask for their money back. In college, I took a huge step further into New Age involvement. I majored in religious studies, studying all the world's major religious traditions, and deepened my knowledge in particular of Eastern religions. In one class, I even got academic credit for joining a Buddhist chanting sect for a while called Nishiren Shoshu Buddhism, where a group of people would be on bended knees chanting repetitious chants for hours at a time in a kind of semi-trance state in front of an idol of paper. The enticing thing about this Buddhist sect is that the main chant that they use does, for many, bring an initial surge of blissful feelings and apparent good fortune. This was my experience, as I detail in my book, and it can be very enticing to a lot of people looking for answers to their personal problems and desires. Also in my college years, as has happened with literally millions of New Agers, I entered the mysterious door of psychedelic drugs, which dynamited huge openings in my mind through which I experienced hundreds of overwhelmingly powerful visions of Satan's mystical temptations. It's impossible to describe these experiences of dazzling luminosity and captivating beauty, but suffice it to say that the psychedelic doorway is an open invitation to exceptionally powerful demonic forces and deep self-delusion. Graduating from college with a BA in religious studies in one hand and yoga beads and psychedelic drugs in the other, I decided to make a career in the New Age, which at this time, around 1978 to 80, was a wide open field with many openings and possibilities. At this time, the New Age had taken firm hold in America, both nationally and on a widespread grassroots level. And choosing from among the thousands of New Age learning centers, communities, and retreats, I ventured throughout America from coast to coast and in between in search of enlightenment and New Age career training. I thought that the New Age is definitely not overseen by one central organization that controls doctrine and overall agenda. In fact, the New Age is extremely diverse and decentralized and often highly competitive. I visited yoga communities where I would join large groups of guru-worshipping people who would spend many hours each day performing exercises and twisting the body into all kinds of pretzel poses and repeating Hindu deity names called mantras in meditative trances for hours on end in a state of blissful ignorance. Some yoga communities are quite bizarre and wildly permissive, like that of Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, who's in India now. Others are very peaceable, clean living, and kind, though their deification of a guru figure as a god chains them to a pretender to the rightful place of Jesus Christ. Pursuing career training as a holistic health professional, I went to several holistic health retreats and schools where I would undergo all kinds of health practices, ranging from the normal to the highly bizarre. At one retreat, they specialize in what is called bodywork. Different from clinical massage, there are numerous forms of New Age bodywork that are based on the concept that mental and emotional problems precipitate in the body's muscles, and that the way to release those problems is to pound, grind, and twist the muscles until they have released all this tension. This is what I have nicknamed jackhammer bodywork. Imagine, if you will, somebody taking their elbow and applying their full body weight on top of that elbow straight down into your calf muscle. I'm talking about some very serious pain here. I'm talking about the kind of pain where you put your hands over your eyes to keep them from popping out of their sockets. And the murder screams that would jump out of people's mouths or something else. At this particular retreat, which was situated on an idyllic island off the coast of Washington, it was difficult adjusting to living in this small, isolated community because amidst the peace and serenity of the surroundings, without warning, heart-chilling screams of agony would fill the air. At times, the place sounded like a torture camp. People came here, though, and underwent such practices to get healthy. This is a kind of New Age version of no pain, no gain. But all I gained was pain. While dragging my poor bruised body to the next adventure after all this wonderful healing, I came upon my next major step into the enemy's New Age web. I discovered crystal power. One day a close friend mysteriously gave me a tiny quartz crystal 
that had been used by an American Indian medicine man. I had absolutely no idea what to do with it. My friend counseled that I should meditate with it. Well, this sounded like the height of absurdity. I wondered what a common rock had to do with anything New Age. This was back in the early 80s, before the crystal craze swept the New Age like wildfire. Back then, less than 5% of New Agers had even thought about the concept of crystal power. I thought to myself, well, I'll give it a try. It couldn't hurt, could it? As it turned out, I was very, very wrong. What I'm going to share with you may seem strange, even unbelievable, but I'm simply reporting the inside story of what I and millions of others who still remain in the New Age experience when they use crystals in various ways. What I experienced was very similar to psychedelic drug experiences. For a full week during my first exposure to crystals, every time I went into a state of New Age meditation, it was a mind-blowing experience in which I saw vision after vision in a state of mystical frenzy. I saw a lot of very alien but highly compelling images, ideas, and forces. At the time, I thought that this was a major step of cosmic enlightenment for me, that I had achieved a huge spiritual leap of mind into what the New Age calls higher consciousness. However, I see now that I had walked right into one of Satan's many snares, and that his counterfeiting demons had woven a web of great delusion. While I thought at the time that things had taken a major turn for the better, in fact they had taken a turn for the worse. Now I should quickly insert here that crystals, in and of themselves, have no power whatsoever. They are inert and lifeless objects. This being stated, I also add that when New Agers use crystals in their various rituals and meditations, many of them have a subjective experience of enhanced and amplified invisible energy forces and feelings. These feelings are definitely not always as explosive as the experiences I just talked about. Many times the sensations are much more subtle, like tingling sensations, feeling of energy moving up and down the spine, and many other diverse perceptions of crystal vibrations, so to speak. All this is not at all scientifically verified in the least, but it is the subjective experience that millions of New Agers have had and are continuing to have. Whether this is real or only imagined, the placebo effect or sorcery remains an open question. Continuing the storyline, during the next year, another major development took place. A number of the spirits who were in back of the New Age started to speak to me directly. This may sound strange, but the phenomenon of channeling is really quite common in many New Age circles. While my partner went into a trance state, a spirit would come in and take over my partner's body for up to two hours at a time. During this period, my partner had no awareness of what was happening and afterwards had no recollection of what had transpired. In the meantime, the different spirits would talk to me directly in private. Many different spirits came and went, each one giving me information and instructions about my life and my life's work. These experiences were something else. Very powerful forces would emanate from these spirits. Religion professor Carl Raschke of the University of Denver asserts that this type of channeling phenomenon can often have a hypnotic effect on people who engage in such practices. In large groups, he asserts that a form of mass hypnosis can occur. From my own experiences and extensive observations, I would tend to agree with Professor Rashke. The masquerading demons who are behind this channeling phenomenon are master enchanters and deceivers. These spirits told me a great number of things. They told me that they were highly advanced spiritual masters from the heavens, and some claimed to be highly advanced extraterrestrial intelligences operating from different star systems and spaceships in our solar system. They all identified themselves as being friendly, wise, and wanting to only serve the higher good of humanity. In reality, these spirits were demons who are master impersonators and deceivers, and they're really quite good at it. They told me that I would be given cosmic wisdom and special information about leading a select portion of humanity into a golden new age of peace, light, and universal brotherhood. They told me that I would write popular books and succeed beyond my wildest dreams, and that I would find the enlightenment and inner peace and fulfillment that I still yearned for but had not attained. And I believed them, for they were quite convincing, and they really did deliver on many, though not all, of their promises. These spirit guides instructed me to write a book on crystal power. I couldn't imagine how this would happen, for at this time I had only known about crystals for six months. The spirits, though, assured me that they would provide all the knowledge. So, among other things, they had me fill a room with hundreds of crystals and geometric arrangements, plus setting up hundreds of pyramids on the floor, walls, and ceilings for the supposed purpose of creating an amplified energy field to enhance communications between the spirits and myself. Each day I would go into this special room, take crystals on my forehead, and go into a semi-trance state. 
in contacting the spirit guides, I would be given precise 